Boeing, and Airbus. There is nothing like the competition between Airbus and Boeing. An airplane that can carry ultimately maybe as many as 800 people. That's the way to make money. And the A380 was a direct challenge to perhaps the most iconic plane Boeing had ever built, the 747. It was the world's first jumbo jet. And since its first flight in 1969, there had been no bigger passenger jet in the sky. This was a market that Boeing had created absolutely themselves, and that they had owned this market. Boeing had a decision to make. What plane, if any, to build to compete with Airbus? We set aside a small team and literally locked them up in a room and said, uh, we need you to start thinking about a brand new airplane. We, we got to understand that. There's a lot of stuff that goes on to try to understand it. You know, is it, is it fuel burn that's more important? Is it pilot uh, salaries that are more important? Is it maintenance costs that are more important? You know, what's the right balance of the economic factors of an airplane that will make it successful? Any successful airplane has to balance the airline's economic concerns against the passenger's travel experience. For decades, airlines have been moving large numbers of people between the world's major aviation centers. Travelers arriving at these hubs, places like New York and London, transfer to smaller planes that then take them to their final destination. But Boeing's research showed that passengers, and now airlines, were looking for a plane that could economically carry people over great distances directly to their final destination without passing through a hub. You know, the last thing you want to do is stop in a city where you don't want to stop. Uh, one, that stop adds time to the trip. Uh, two, it almost guarantees your luggage doesn't show up with you. Uh, and there's a reasonable chance that you won't get to the final destination when you thought you would as well. So that forces us to do things like, well, how can we make airplanes smaller but have the same capability as a larger airplane? Airbus had bet on size with the A380, which travels from hub to hub. But Boeing saw a market that was ready for a smaller, faster plane that could travel nonstop to its final destination. Boeing called it the Sonic Cruiser. So there was this really enthusiastic group of engineers at Boeing that were working on the Sonic Cruiser, uh, you know, like their life depended on it. It was the coolest thing at Boeing. It would be a dramatic departure from the design of existing commercial jets. It would have a delta wing, rear-mounted engines, two small canards near the front, and a fuselage made of a synthetic material, not metal. Built for speed, it would fly just below the speed of sound. Airbus was building the really big airplane, and we were building the really fast airplane. They zigged, we zagged. That's a difference there, you know, and we're going to see, you know, which strategy will work best. The shape of the Sonic Cruiser was like virtually nothing that had been seen before. It was a thing of beauty. It just caught everybody's imagination. And what the airlines were looking at were two things. One is the 20% faster gave the passenger what they wanted, right? You get someplace quicker. The other thing was the airplane flies 20% faster. In theory, uh, you should need 20% less of them. But speed comes at a price. Boeing's previous attempt in the 1960s to make speed a priority was its supersonic transport, or SST. Few planes have ever generated more excitement in the aviation world. The revolutionary design, the most amazing aeroplane, swing wing, four huge engines, 300 passengers, two and a half times the speed of sound. But the supersonic transport never went beyond a full-scale mock-up. The modern jetliner is one of the most complex machines ever built. It represents a culmination of years of design and research, the cutting edge of engineering and technology, and a corporate gamble of epic proportions. When you're building a new aircraft, it's a really huge undertaking, and it's so much is riding on it. The company's whole future is at stake.
A new plane is both an extraordinarily exciting event and a really frightening event. It's big. Today's dollars, brand new airplane, the number could be 20, 25 billion dollars. Billion with a B. We make huge bets on commercial airplanes where you have to invest a significant amount of money up front before recovering a dime. You have to make sure you have the right product and that you have customers that are gonna pay for it. Determining how and when to launch a new airplane and which new technologies to include is one of the great challenges of the aerospace business. Mistakes like building the wrong plane or no new plane at all can doom a company. Most of the legendary names in aviation are no longer in the business of making commercial aircraft. Companies like de Havilland, Fokker, Douglas, and Lockheed. And that tells you something about the sort of Darwinian progress of this aerospace business. Um, if you made the wrong bet, as some of those companies did, you spent um, billions of dollars on the wrong airplane, you go out of business. Today, the enterprise of developing and building these incredibly complex and expensive machines is dominated by just two companies, Boeing and Airbus. There is nothing like the competition between Airbus and Boeing. And for both companies, the stakes are never higher than when they make the decision to build an all-new airplane. In 2000, Boeing was at just such a moment. Airbus had announced it would build the biggest passenger jet ever, the A380, a double-decker that could seat up to 850 people. And one consistent concern of every airline is the cost of fuel. There was almost a recognition that the supersonic era was suddenly over with and we were looking at a much more austere future. Security was an issue. The price of oil went through the roof. Our customers told us they wanted an airplane that went long range, burned much less fuel, and for all of that, they'd be willing to sacrifice all the performance we had, the speed uh, and some of the other things. Burns less fuel, operates more economically because their customer is price sensitive. So although it was a um, sad kind of acknowledgement, really, of the realities of, of life, uh, Boeing got on with it, you know. Hey, the market's spoken. We know what they want. Let's go and do it. Boeing would not bet on speed or size. They saw a market for a super-efficient, mid-sized passenger jet. Boeing would call its new plane the 787 Dreamliner. The plane they envisioned could seat as many as 335 passengers. It would travel at conventional speeds but it would incorporate many of the advanced technologies intended for the sonic cruiser. What would set this new plane apart from every commercial jet that had preceded it would be the very material used to construct it. It would be a transformation that mirrored another radical change in aviation almost 70 years earlier. In 1933, Boeing debuted the all-metal Model 247, the world's first modern airliner. The wood and canvas that most planes had been made of since the first days of aviation became a thing of the past. Boeing's 787 Dreamliner would not be made out of metal, but out of fiber-reinforced plastic. It is an advanced variation of composite, the kind of material commonly used in small consumer products, such as tennis rackets and bike helmets. It's made of lightweight carbon fibers, fabricated into thin layers and infused with a glue. The combination is much stronger than either ingredient on its own, 10 times stronger than its weight in steel. It's the biggest change ever in the history of commercial aviation, by far. But before the designers and engineers in Seattle could begin the multi-year effort to build such a revolutionary aircraft, the Boeing company had to figure out how to pay for it. 
the cost of research and development to design and build the 787 was initially estimated to be in excess of $10 billion, an investment Boeing would have to make or forfeit its leadership position in commercial aviation to Airbus. Boeing's decision was to seek strategic partners in an effort to cut its research and development costs by as much as 40%. Thanks for watching. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos. Thanks.